Hello, 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 everybody. We are here starting off with the Martine Show Thursday. And 8 p.m. EST. You guys know how we do it here. We're getting ready for our interview tonight with Miss Margaret P. Bean, playwright and movie director and so much more, who's going to be speaking to us about her journey right here. All right. This is the continuation and the celebration for the continuation and the celebration for Women's History Month. Margaret P. Bean. So that we could start the interview. Hello, V. The Bro. Welcome aboard. Thank you for being on the Martine Show and supporting Margaret P. Bean. Let me share the live. If you guys could share the live, I would really appreciate it. Share it with your counterparts. Share it with your um, tribe, friends, and family. Let them know that we're currently on. We're on every Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. EST, right here at Author Martine Myers Handle. It's the Martine Show, where we celebrate people for who they are and what they have to offer every week, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And for this month, we are completing with a Women's History Month series, okay? And Margaret P. Bean has the pleasure to be part of the Women's Month series. Hi, MK Lady, nineteen sixty seven. Welcome aboard. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to the Martine Show. Those of you who don't know about the Martine Show, it's all about self love. It's a self love journey here. We celebrate people every week. Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. EST, all right? And um, the journey here is self-awareness, self-development, uh, and everything social. Margaret P. being just connected with us. How are you? Can you hear me? You're very muzzled, like I can't, I could hardly hear you. Maybe you want to put your volume up. Are you on your phone or the computer? Margaret, we're trying to connect with you. I don't know what happened, how that happened. I just sent you like three invites. Can you connect with us, Margaret? I'm going to try this again. I was saying to myself, I know that's not Margaret. Am I here now? Yes, you are. Oh, my God. Okay. That wasn't me. That that was my girlfriend, Barbara. Thanks, Barbara, for no stepping problem. in. You know, yeah, when, when we, know used to work, we used to work together, and she was my bub, my backup buddy. So I couldn't get on, so she's still being my backup buddy. Thank you. Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. Yeah, well, I'm excited. Hi, Hi family and friends. Hi, Dina. My, my daughter's in. on here. Hi, Hi how are you? <laughs> Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. Um, it's a Women's Month, and women have made great contributions to history, culture, and our society. And so, not to mention the seeds they've sown 
um, are not only for today, but for the future. And so I'm truly humbled and honored to be here and be a part of this Women's History um, show, um, being a part of Legacy of Women. I'm really, really proud and excited. So thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. I want to acknowledge your daughter who's here, Black Mamba. Thank you yes, for supporting that's you, my baby girl, my baby girl. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So I'm super excited to have you on and um, been looking forward to this. I've seen your work around and basically to have the opportunity to speak to you today is very special to me. So I wanted to let you know that from the very beginning, you know, thank I'm very you. fond of you. I'm, I'm a silent Aww. fan. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> You're welcome. So I wanted to get that out of the way. So you can go ahead and introduce yourself, let everybody know there's a snippet of who you are, and then the conversation will flow from there. Well, I tell people all the time, I'm just Margaret on an uh, average day, um, but God chooses to take the um, ordinary and do the extraordinary. And so I'm grateful that he uses me in the way and the capacity that he does. And so um, I had started out um, with a nonprofit ministry, giving back to the community with Thanksgiving baskets. And um, sometimes my daughter would say, oh, mom, we don't barely got food and you're feeding someone else. And so um, God gives us an abundance. And so so over the years, I've written um, a book in 2004. I wrote another book in 2015, 2016. And then I had an interview and the lady said, what's next? And so I did a stage play called The Game Changer. And The Game Changer went on tour for like four years. And it went from Maryland, D.C., New York twice. Um, then I was asked to do another play with our dear friend Yolanda, Sister Code, there's rules to this thing. And so we had to postpone. And then we eventually had to cancel. But at this point, you know, I'm looking forward to greater things. During this pandemic, um, I had to flip the script literally um, from writing plays to actually writing books again and publishing books for other people. So I started a publishing company called MPB Publishing. Um, what else happened? Oh, I got to work on an amazing film project with my mentor, Kazar Coleman. He is a filmmaker here in the D.C. area. And so I went from production assistant to production management and the ability to become a certified camera operator. And so I figured if I was going to do my own film, I needed to learn the basics from camera all the way up. And so now he's working on a new project and I'm doing content writing for him. Um, and I've just got some great opportunities coming down the pike. I'm going to be doing my own content creation for TV. Um, so that's a announcement that's being heard here first. <laughs> and so guys. exclusive <laughs> tea, got the exclusive tea. Yes. And so I'm excited. Oh, my other bonus daughter. Hi, Sadia. She is a blessing to me. She um, introduced me to Black Girl Everything. Shout out to Black Girls Everything. Um, I'm going to be a speaker um, this weekend for a retreat. So this interview here is like kicking off my promotional weekend for my new book and oh. I'm going to be a speaker this weekend and so I'm still packing but I'm like I'm going to be here for this interview because I want to be able to um, speak to someone and encourage them that if I could do it you could do it too and so I'm grateful for this opportunity to be here um, to just be able to chit chat with you you said there was no formality we were just going to have yeah, girl yeah. chat and talk mm -hmm. it up and um, you're also an author, so I'm excited yeah. about that. I'm excited that, you know, we share some common interests besides Yolanda. She's an awesome, amazing person. Mm -hmm. and, um, Yolanda is phenomenal. Phenomenal. I'm so proud of her. Um, and all the, I, I, I see her. I see her. Um, thank you for your support. Thank you for connecting us. And um, so I'm grateful for you. I'm so proud of her. Um, she is doing great things. She got a new book out. Y'all need to get that pep talk. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, she's always supporting. And so I love her. Love her. Yep. Wow. Um, I'm so impressed by everything that you shared in terms of how you got into writing and then it mm -hmm. turned into plays and then now it's turning into basically, um, uh, I don't know if it's sitcom or like video, you know, for TV and, and everything. It's just amazing to see how 
you can actually, one person can actually take an idea, one idea, and possibly turn it into so many different ways. I mean, when you actually took Yolanda's book and stated that it could turn into a play, I thought mm -hmm. that was the most brilliant thing ever. Like, I would not have envisioned that. And, you know, I'm a visionary myself, but we're okay. all different visionaries. You know, okay. everybody has a different type of vision. And I thought that that was like, really really um, amazing to the point where i'm like where did you get that idea <laughs> <laughs> well yolanda you know her famous thing is you always got to be creative and you got to think outside the box and so yes. she definitely thinks outside the box and um, she pulled me out the box in my writing and um so i'm excited so that project may be just you know going to collect a little bit of dust not a lot you know um i have to do some things here in the dc area i i get hired to do playwright stuff um my most recent project i was hired to do uh um, some training for uh, police departments and they wanted something different and so it was not a PowerPoint it was a live presentation and so my path in writing is going like from writing for plays and stages and books and now trainings for police departments and so I'm so excited oh my daughter Darrell she joined in Black the Black Princess, Princess. hey boom I'm so excited. Um, you, you know, it's it's exciting to see your children watch because I have four daughters, you know, and so, yeah, and so I just want to make them proud and I want them to know that their dreams and visions can come to pass. And so um, my daughter, Darrell, she just um, graduated. She's working in the doctor's office and she's on her way to becoming a doctor. I'm so proud of her. My daughter, Danielle, awesome. she's an amazing creator. She created um, a body scrub that was so amazing. And so I'm really proud of them all. And um, so thank you, daughters, for tuning in and um Y'all gonna make me cry because I just want to make my children proud. You know, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I dropped out of high school at 16 and um, mm -hmm. I became a mother at 18 by choice. And by the time I was 25, I had three kids and I love them um, all for making me grow up. And I'm still growing up. I haven't learned everything yet, but I'm still growing up. And so their love and their support means a lot to me. And um so I'm excited to be a woman in this era where I can um, not only um, give back, but reach forward. Um, I work for University of Maryland, my day job. And um, they said, what's the, 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 you know, like purpose that you want to work here? The seed I sow today in buying equipment, lab equipment, because I work in research and scientific. So the equipment that I get to buy for children to learn how to become doctors and work in the field of medicine. It's a seed planted today that will be a part of their future. So to be able to give back from your testimony, but to also give forward into someone else's life, it's, it's an amazing um, privilege and an honor to be able to do that. And so I'm excited about where I am in my life. Um, uh, Sadia, uh, my bonus baby girl, she started a group called um, Heal Your Shit Sis. And, um, you know, I'm learning so many things about me. I'm evolving, I'm growing and becoming a better woman. And um, so I'm excited about the women that God has put in my life to help me to become better. Um, you know, just like this journey with the books, I feel like you write a book and then you write a play and then you write a film and then you go to TV. And so it's just next level up. And, and that's what my book is about right now. Um, moving from think thinking to doing. And a lot of times we have dreams and visions and things on the back burner. We got journals full of things that we want to do. But we need to learn how to focus and channel our energy on the one thing that we can do best. And out of all of the books and out of all of the plays and out of all of the films and all of the TV stuff to come, writing is the consistent key. And so I'm just like, I got to keep writing and I want to write messages that bring a powerful impacting statement. So when I do a play, um, I may include some healthcare awareness. So the most recent play I did, um, was dealing with mental health care and um, HIV. So there's messages in there that say, hey, you know what? I'm not just coming to see another play. I'm gonna see myself. 
And when I leave, I want to be able to say that one thing in that play touched me or one thing that I read in that book inspired me to be a better person. And so um, Strengthen Not Sister was created to um, encourage, inspire, build and strengthen the sister. Um, Luke in scripture talks about he had to go through a conversion. And so during his conversion, when he came back, he went and strengthened his brothers. And so I've been through some conversions, transformations and transitions. Mm -hmm. And so I look forward to going back and pulling my sisters up, um, letting them know that a high school dropout um, who had the opportunity to go back to school um, in my 30s and get my degrees and graduate, you know, um, you can do anything. You definitely can do anything. And this being Women's History Month, I think we make history every day, you know, yes, not, just, and, and not just 31 not just in days in March. <laughs> every right. day every single day and so um, I'm just grateful for the opportunities that have been afforded to me when you get phone calls and people say oh can you write something for me um, it's like wow God you've you've allowed my words to to be written um, get up and walk and talk and so that leads me to my amazing cast of people who um, have been with me for a long time and so some have fallen off and, and they're not falling off they've gone to do other great things my niece Marissa is on here she was in my stage play and now she's writing plays and I'm so proud of her and um, I have um, Harmony Smith, I found her at a jam session and she was an amazing singer and she was like, I don't know how to act. And so she's an amazing actor. Um, Darlitra Perry, please look out for her. She's an amazing singer, um, writer, producer. I had to do a live interview with the playwright maybe like two weeks ago and I called on Harmony, Darlitra, Avery and Josh. That's like my team. You know, I called them. I said, look, I got the call on Sunday. I need something by Tuesday. And by Saturday, we need to video this. So it was ice on the ground. I had written something in two days. I met with the curator of the show. She was like, oh, I need a little bit more time. So I said, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll give you some more time. So we got together that Saturday. We took Harmony's house and we recreated her house. Her house became a living room for us. It became a nail salon for us. Um, it just became all things to get this 25 minute play together. And um, so it's good to have people on your team that are passionate about your brands and that you work with them. I, I tried to understand why Tyler used the same people all the time because you can call mm -hmm. them in, in two days and say, let's make this quick video um, and make it happen, yes. you know? And so Darlitra, yes. uh, she, she videotaped everything for us on her phone and uh, she had so much stuff on her phone. It was, uh, it was phenomenal. We were up at two o'clock in the morning offloading stuff That's so that amazing. we could get it. Oh, y'all don't know what goes on behind the scenes uh, to make things oh happen. God. I tell you, <laughs> we, we do some amazing things to bring a great presentation, but it's amazing when you're a writer. I know you know because you're an author. When someone mm -hmm. reads your book and they call you and they say, hey, Martin, I read something that changed my life or, you know, you, you see it in action, your words walking and talking in somebody's life and changing things for them. So, um I'm sure you're well aware of how that feeling oh, yeah. makes you feel. Yeah. Oh yeah. yes. It's um it's it's actually it's not something that to tell you the truth, when I started writing, like for me, writing um contributes to my healing. It's all about healing. Okay. And okay. um I I started writing because I needed to release emotions, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and get grounded and find myself. So that's how I got into my writing. Um mm -hmm. and people like pick up a book and they tell me, well, I read your book and I'm so proud of you. And thank you so much for sharing this story because it's mm -hmm. actually my story as well. That's mm -hmm. very touching because when you start, when like for me, I decided to write because of healing. I never thought about the audience. I never thought about the impact. I, I mm -hmm. just knew that I needed to release myself. And that mm -hmm. was it. Mm -hmm. And once that was right. done, it was like, okay. You know, but when you get the reciprocity, it's right, like, right, oh, right, right, right. That's the real oh. Lord, people. It works, okay? Yeah, it's you, yeah. and it's to be respected. And that's yeah. when you know it, that you actually, big time, you have people who actually follow you, who respect you, who honor you. 
who really put you on a, some sort of a pedestal to be like, you know what, I could look after her. You know, if she did it, then I could do it too, which is exactly what you're doing as well. I mean, I see you that particular way. A lot of other women see you in that particular way. So I really want to take the time to congratulate you for actually stepping up and sharing a very intimate part of you, letting us know exactly what your startup was like. It was not simple. It was not easy. But that didn't stop where you, you know, stop you from going where you needed to go. You still strive. You still push. and 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 I'm and I'm, I'm not finished yet. You know, God told me my ladder shall be greater, and so I'm just getting started. I haven't even scratched the surface yet. I haven't even exactly. scratched the surface yet. And, you know, that's the drive of leadership. You know, that's the drive mm. of leadership. that's the drive that we are like Dwayne Hurt is putting fires. You know, um, fire up and stuff. Hey, that's Dwayne, the drive. how are you? You have that inner drive that it's it's cannot be explained only comes from leadership and it's recognized by another leader you know and, and wow. that's what it is and, and wow. it's amazing and i love it i love it you know well you um, know thing, go ahead when I started, I said, God takes an ordinary person and does extraordinary things. And so I'm just grateful um, to God for doing all things well in my life, because um, there was times when I was maybe 17, 19, probably about 17. I wanted to commit suicide. I wanted to end what I thought was devastation at 17, not realizing that God had a greater purpose for me. Um, and so I'm grateful that the uh, pills that I took <laughs> were not able to, to succeed. And so um, high school dropout, tried to commit suicide. I left home when I was 16, um, just trying to, to figure this thing called life out. And so um I'm grateful, you know, God gave me daughters to say, hey, your life is valuable. You have to give something back to them and they have to go forward. I sent my daughter um, a, a message today, I think or if it may have been yesterday. Um, and I look at her life and I say, you are the generational curse breaker in our family. You don't even realize who you are and what you're going through and why. And sometimes she'll say, oh, those generational curses, they got to go. And so sometimes we go into some places spiritually that we don't understand and pull out blessings, not only for us, but for the future. And so I'm just grateful. Um, I never, ever thought, and I tell people this all the time, they say, oh, are you living your dream? I have to say no, because I don't really know what my dream was or remember what it is when it comes to this book piece or this writing piece. It's definitely God. Um, I had um, wrote Life Happened in 2012 and, and things got turned around, but my kids were grown at that point And I was like, okay, I have to discover Margaret and who Margaret is and what Margaret likes to do. And like you, I, I journaled my first book and it was geared towards women. Like I shared little stories to inspire them. And in that I got my release, like, oh, wow, I do have a purpose. I do have a meaning. And so the goal for the book was just to accomplish something for me. So success to me is I, I want to write a book and I get it done and that's it. I don't need to be on the hits list or, you know, sell millions of books. Would it be nice? Cause you know, scripture says, leave your children, children inheritance. And so I'm on grandbaby number seven, eight now. And so, uh, would love to have inheritance to leave them. Um, but when you allow God to lead you in all things, it's, it's definitely next level. It's definitely um, guidance from him in all things. And so I'm grateful for the path that my life has taken. Um, maybe when I was a kid, I was hating being a girl because of the cycle or something. But today I was in the kitchen and I was like, yes. I am getting ready to be one interview on the Martine show. That was number one. <laughs> and then number two, it is Women's History Month. And I'm getting an interview during this month. I'm getting ready to be a part of history here. I was so excited. Like, I'm a woman. Yes. <laughs> well, I can identify. I can identify. I remember. I remember. Um, 
when my first story came out, it was I was in an anthology with uh, chocolate and diamonds for the women's soul, and mm -hmm. it's, it's all about women. And um, it was funny how I was always into women empowerment without really realizing I was in with women mm -hmm. empowerment because mm -hmm. um, my mom, as a leader and a community organizer, she led an organization and she created her own to help. Um, Im to help people with immigration and also okay. to help okay. people from other countries read. And it was mm -hmm. all women. So that was the startup of women in Parma for me growing up. But then okay. I went to all girls school. And when I went to mm -hmm. all girls school, it was all about women empowerment. I, back then, you know, it was just like regular for me. I didn't really see it as a women empowerment. But when I had to publish my first story with this group of women and they're mm -hmm. like, oh, we're going to bring it out for women empowerment to celebrate March 8th, um, which is International Women's Day. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time I was published. Then I so I was saying to myself, just like you, like, wow. I'm actually proud to be a woman. Like I get the women empowerment thing. I'm feeling it. I feel like there's a space for me now, you know? And mm -hmm. then once you get that recognition, you start to own it. You know, yeah. you start yeah. to really feel it, embody it, and then mm -hmm. it becomes part of you. So that one book turned out mm -hmm. to six published books, including my own personal anthology that I created. Uh -huh. Which okay. became a little reading, you know, book. Uh -huh. And then it was just like constant, constant stuff. But I feel you with that. Because at first, with everything that was going on with me, I was just like, oh, my God, what was the point of me being a girl? I went through so <laughs> many things. I mean, my mm -hmm. award-winning book is called Faces of Uterine Fibroids. I'm talking about my fibroid situation that I went through for 21 years. You could imagine. Okay? So <laughs> think about that. Like how disrupted I was, and I was releasing so many, so much pain and emotion and everything else. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. that that book, full of pain and emotions. And I just wanted to say thank you because I reached a point where it was all settled, and I was basically cured, I would say. And then that's the book that becomes recognized, and that's the book I ride on. You know, that's the okay, that's the book okay, of okay, everything. so the one you least expect. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. And that was the yep. intelligence that I created that became okay. like the one that put me on the pedestal. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I've written so, five books and um, one of my girlfriends, Harmony, she said, when are you going to write your book? And I'm like, okay, I have been writing books. And she was like, no, <laughs> when are you going to write your book? So I I'm sure my, my schedule will slow down. But right now, um, this book here that I wrote, um, Next Level Up, y'all make sure y'all get yeah. your copies, um, moving from thinking to doing. It's inspiring people to take those dreams and visions and make them reality. A lot of times we get married to procrastination and it's time to, to get a divorce. I know, you know, you don't want to divorce it, but procrastination, um, it's a thief of time and it stops you from doing the things that you need to do to move to the next level. Um, I feel like, like I said, writing books and then going to film and going here is taking me different levels. When I decided I wanted to write a film, I said, well, I need to know how the camera works. So I'm a certified camera operator. So um, investing in yourself and make investments that are going to carry you for a long time. Um, even though this is not my dream, I do have a passion for it. And so every time I think that, oh, maybe I won't write or do anything today, then I'll get a phone call and get hired to do some writing for someone. Um, I think my biggest problem with my writing is it's like I write from a place that's so stirring, that's so um, like a part of me is like, okay, I really don't want to give this away. Like, how do I give this away? Um, it's like one of my children, but you know, you're getting paid for it. And, and that's a, a plus because you can write forever and never get paid for it. So when people start calling yeah. you to write, for them that is a miracle in and of itself so um, I think in this pandemic that people are reading more and so books are definitely a necessity um, and even 
out of a pandemic. Books are definitely a necessity. There is so much history in books and knowledge that people um, really just don't understand that if I just pick up a book, I can find out about finances. I can find out about business or just being a better woman or healing is in this book for me. Um, mm -hmm. So I highly encourage people to get books and become a part of book clubs and share your experiences with other women. Um, and even with men, they need it too. I see Sam is on here. He's like, don't put a man's yes. name on your book. <laughs> yes, Thanks for that, so Sam. Because I, like that. <laughs> um, yes. I, think, I think men need healing too. And so, uh, you yes, know, when you too. write, you try to write really from do. a broader perspective and you think about your demographics. Do you just want to be geared towards men or men and women because they both have, you know, issues of similar nature. And so, um, you know, I don't know what the next book may be. It might be something directly just for men, you know. Yeah. I, I love the fact that you highlighted and you recognize men as well. I mean, as a, a woman writer, because my, my niche is women empowerment. That's a category mm -hmm. I fell under. And mm -hmm. I see why that became my category because um, I have a thing for it, you know. There's mm -hmm. a passion mm -hmm. there. And based on everything that I've gone through in my personal life, but mm -hmm. I'm a big advocate for men empowerment. You know, that is no lie. Like everybody who, who has come on the Martin show, all the men know I'm a very big advocate for men empowerment, as well as a big, very big advocate for women, women empowerment. Men, okay. as you stated, need a lot of healing. And I believe mm -hmm. that when it comes to men, they're very much pushed to the curb and mm -hmm. underestimated a lot of the times. There are more programs, you know, obviously for women, but men need their own programs, especially when it comes to mental health. They need to be able to speak their story, let people know what they're feeling, what their emotions are, and have the ability to actually release them, you know, in, in a format just like women do, but geared right. for men. And, yeah, and I think a safe place. Needed, yeah, a safe place. Yeah. A safe place yeah. needs to be created for them as well. Yeah, definitely a, a safe place. Yeah, Yolanda is saying, oh, my God. Oh, I love you, too. You. Love you, too, baby. <laughs> Thank Safe you so travels. much for the support. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate you so much. Back at you. <laughs> and I want to acknowledge, she's, she's, we have a few more people in the chat room. Lanny feels peachy. Welcome aboard. That's, Thank you for supporting. Oh, hey, that's Leilani. She was a part of my Game Changer stage play. She she is an amazing um, actor, and um, she will show up when I'm uh, on an interview. So thank you so much, Leilani, for um, being a part of Game Changer, showing up um, this evening. I thank you. Um, I have some great things coming down the pike, so definitely uh, reach out and um, stay in touch so we can definitely um, – do use you again and some greater things. Nice. Yes. And we have Luke Savage who's in the room with us as well. Thank you so much for coming through and supporting uh, Margaret Peeding on her interview on The Martine Show. It's really, really nice of each and every one of you guys to be present for this. Um, another thing I wanted to ask you when it comes to your um, writing. Mm hmm when it comes to your writing, like, do you have a specific genre that you gear towards um, for your stories or it's pretty much like how you feel, what, however, whatever comes through? Because mine is all geared towards women empowerment. And um, do you have a specific category? I know women empowerment is your category, but I know that you may have other subcategories. I, I tend to get pulled into other things. When you get hired to do a playwright, you get to mm -hmm. um, make that person's vision come to pass. And so they may give you a few things to say, hey, I need this, that, and the other. And then you begin to write your storyline around their 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 synopsis, so to say. Um, mm -hmm. But my, my first book was geared towards women. And then my second book was geared towards having a better relationship with God. Um, um, I have found myself in a place and it is called I'm raising your standard in the walk with the Lord. And I said, if we can get this relationship,
relationship right, then we can get this right and we can take it here um, because I just needed to feel closer to God. He didn't need me. I had left him. And so that book mm -hmm. drew me closer. And then um, I told you life had happened. And so I just kind of discovered who Margaret was and what I like to eat and like to do, you know, having four small daughters. We always had spaghetti because it's scratched in a pot. So um, being able to discover what I like to eat, what I like to do. Um, Madison is my pen. And so uh, she's amazing. She writes poetry. She writes um, small stories. She's just that writing is different um, and it's it's heartfelt and, and it's dealing with just different things. That book has poems. It has um moments in my life. Um, one was when my mother had breast cancer and I shared that day that we found out and it was just, um, I call it silent moments because it, it brings a silence over your soul when you realize that someone is sick and that is terminal. Um, and then um, I wrote a book, um, Relax, Release and Relate. I have been running up and down the road to New York, um, casting, working on plays, and I was tired and I had began to write that I needed to rest and relax and, and rejuvenate. And I was still running and I was running on fumes. And then we got the pandemic and I slept for the first two weeks and I was able to finish that book. And that was the first book that I actually published myself, like uploaded, put it on Amazon, mm -hmm. made it happen because I had paid people in the past to do my books and I paid a lot of money. And so mm -hmm. I was like, you know what, I'm going to learn how to do this process for myself. And that was another mm -hmm learning lesson like you have to learn how to do things sometimes for yourself because mm -hmm. people will overcharge you try to get over on you and and you can do it if you just sit down and it's about reading and, and learning the process and so I had published that book and I was like oh wow I did it and so I help other people publish their books and um, this book here um, next level up um, like I mentioned earlier black girls everything retreat my topic is level up and I wanted to have some something tangible for the women to take away with them as a reference. Like, okay, here's this book that tells you to go from moving to doing, but then um, I was put in the health segment. So it's about, uh, it's a, it's the health segment, business segment, and I think it's entrepreneurship. And so I was gearing the book towards business. And then um, my pressure had went up so high. I had been trying to, um, I had got hired to do this writing and it was very stressful. It was a six week project and I had people who were part of it from out of town, people who were local and we were meeting via Zoom and um, this was different for me. So it pulled me out of my comfort zone and it stressed me out because I wanted to do a good job because this person called me and was like, oh, I don't know if this is the direction you want to go in, but this is what I have. And I scratched myself to that capacity and took on the challenge and said, I'm ready for it. And my pressure went up like super high. And so I had to sit down for a minute. And so um, now leveling up, understanding that self-care is okay and, and work-life balance is okay. And it's okay to say no and to live unapologetically. And even though you have a passion for your works or your side hustle, as they call it, that you still have to keep that self-care and that balance. So sometimes you just have to shut down and you have to say, no, I can't do it. And it's really important to not only level up in your hustle, but also level up in your winding down because um, we just go and go and go and as women we don't say no and we have people pulling us to the left and to the right and and um, I will say the blessings overlap I don't complain about people calling but I realize that I can't take on all projects I can't be all things to all people and that my self-care is definitely important I'm getting older and at the end of the day um, I have a lot more to do and so I just have to pace myself but I'm not going to procrastinate myself. I'm just going to pace myself um, and go to the next level. Well, thank you so much for highlighting procrastination. I mean, you could not have explained it any better. It is something that we all need to be mindful of. And mm -hmm. we need to mm -hmm. make sure that we're conscious about it and be able to push it to the side and be like, listen, I'm not going to 
you know, procrastinate any longer. I mean, you will get delayed here and there, but just to not do something at all, you know, is an issue, you know, because you're only stopping yourself. That's so sabotage, right. basically. And it's right. a real thing. It's a real right. thing. And that's something that I discuss on my show here every week, you know, with all the interviews, it comes up all the time. And I'm so happy mm -hmm. that you highlight it. And self-care, self-love is necessary. Mm -hmm. Necessary, necessary. And, you know, delay doesn't mean denial. Delay means exactly. that it's just not time. And it's not that things are not still moving. Things are still moving in a delayed state. And it just slows down a little bit because, you know, sometimes as much as we want to give our three-year-old a car, they're not ready to drive it yet. So you may go get them a big wheel or a tricycle and they still have, you know, the, 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 the tricycle things on the side to help them balance too. So, you know, at the end of the day, just if you have a dream or a vision, I encourage you to nurture it, invest in it. And definitely you will find that everybody doesn't see or understand your vision or your dream the way that you do, but don't you give up on it. Okay. Um, God will give you a dream that's bigger than your budget. So don't look at your budget because <laughs> right now I'm looking at my budget and I'm speaking truth. I'm like, okay, God, I want to hire my cast and I got to pay some fees for this and um, I need investors. And so I did get a lady call me. She said she would be an investor and I'm like, okay, God, that's a blessing, but I need a little bit more investors. Um, I really want my own studio. I want to be able to employ people. And so I'm going to need you to, you know, make all of these things happen because you're God and you can do it. And um, these visions that you show me they have to be from you because in and of myself like I said this is not my dream I didn't dream any of this um, but this is the path that God keeps taking me on and so um, I used to preach and people used to come to hear me preach over a pulpit and the ministry got shut down and so I said okay God what am I going to do now and he was like you're going to take the message to the masses and I'm like okay God how am I going to take the message to the masses and so I write books they go all over the world I write plays um, they get recorded they go all over the world um, I was blessed to be able to go to Ghana in 2018 and it was a group of us and that was a give back trip we took school supplies to kids over there. So there's more to me than just writing books and they're speaking in me and there is give back, community give back. Um, I think I won an award for Black Girl Rock um, giving out to the community. Um, like I said, there were times where we give out Thanksgiving baskets and my daughter's like, Ma, you take a food out of our refrigerator, bless somebody else. And we never missed a meal, you know, and so I'm grateful for that, that we were able to, um, I think one time we had a adopted a shelter and we were able to go in and take shoes and clothes and and basic body care things that we take for granted every day but um so it is more to me than just writing. Um, I give back in the community as much as I can when I can and um I'm I'm grateful for the opportunities to take the the message to the masses at this point in my life via the streams that God has opened and made available for me to do. Mm -hmm. Awesome. I love the fact that you are always constantly checking in with God and you're keep, you keep asking, okay, you want me to do this? Okay, how do we do this? How is this going to happen? You know, you keep going back and checking and that checkpoint is so important and it's something that we all need to uh, really imply, get into and really imply and, and practice at a point where it becomes routine because sometimes, you know, you do get a vision or you get a message and you just sit there with it. Like, okay, you're like, okay, I guess I'm going to make it work, but you have no idea how to make it work. And the reason being is because you're not continuing on with, you're not continuing on with the communication to know the other parts of the directives. Right. And right. I guess as a playwright, it's, it's automatic for you to be able to keep going and asking 
and really knowing exactly like what's the next step, what's the next step. So that's that's awesome. And well, I, I, you know, when I did my first play, I didn't know what the next steps were. I wrote the play um, one day. I, I worked for University of Maryland. We we're closed the last week of December, and so when I had the interview it was November, and the lady said, "What's next?" I said, "The play." So I sat down one day and I just wrote the play called um, Game Changer. The name changed several times during the writing, um, but then it, it just kept sticking to me. Game Changer, Game Changer, and. And so um, I had my girls come over. I tell people all the time, get you accountability group of people. They came over, they read through the play with me and um, they were like, oh my God, this is amazing. And um, so I was like, okay, God, what do I do next? So I went and rented a hotel and I put out a casting call. Oh my God, people were coming from California. Um, a girl contacted me from England and the one, I put this in the book, the one that stands out for me the most is a young lady um, from Arkansas. She got in her car with her husband and her three little babies and they drove here for three days so that she can um, audition to be a part of my play. She was good. She was really, mm -hmm. really good, but I couldn't have her come every week for rehearsal. Um, I don't mm. rush to do certain things. And so we had rehearsal. We started in April and the show was in September because I wanted the cast to have an authentic relationship. And mm -hmm. so when they were on stage that they could um, literally um, – have this authentic relationship because sometimes you forget your lines and so mm -hmm. you can feed off of someone in the cast and they can speak your line back to you to bring you back to full circle and so I couldn't have her keep coming back and forth but she mm -hmm. was the most the one that stands out for me the most and then I was like okay I want to take the play other places so I um we did it here in Maryland and then I actually came back to Hempstead and did it at Hempstead High School um, to to bring back culture and arts to the youth. And so um, I honored some people, Curtis Watts, Michelle Mann, uh, Sherry Deutsch, they're, they're counselors, and my cousin, Hank Williams, they're counselors to kids. And so we, we probably gave them all free tickets to come, but um, mm -hmm. I wanted to expose them to the arts and um, culture um, outside of something different. And so we went to New York and um, we went, we came back here to DC. And then the last show was in October 2019 before the pandemic in New York at Jamaica Performing Arts. And um, so I look forward to when the stages open back up because I love the intensity of bringing it to the stage. And then um, I get a little crazy <laughs> with it. We were um, on set, uh, we were on stage and um, the, the mics didn't work right. So, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm all female director. So I come in with my long gown on and my heels on but don't mess up my stuff so I took those heels off I marched up that stage and I was just like hold up wait a minute y'all don't travel too far for these mics to not be working right and I'm paying too much money for these mics to not be working right I shut the show down and they were like that's a boss move right there I was like look people paying like 40 50 dollars a ticket these mics need to work right okay we are gonna start this over again is that are y'all okay with that and so I could be really <laughs> intense with the show really really it. intense yeah Yolanda was, there. Yeah. Yolanda was there Yolanda was Yolanda was there that night and I was like look we can already shut this down I I, I had people traveling from Maryland because my cast mm -hmm. came from Maryland to New York and I had maybe one or two people from New York. I was like, nah, we get ready to shut this down. So I take what I do very, very seriously. My name is on this and then my cast name is on it, you know, yes. and so I'm grateful for the people that hang in there with me and uh, we get some gigs and I get to pay them um, for the first three years. I wasn't able to pay them. So it was definitely passion for them and I did pay for their hotels and I did pay for the travel um, but at the end of the day I was just like you know what 
God, I need to be able to pay these people. And sometimes mm-hmm. I have Rob Peter to pay Paul. And um, I said, I probably could do a pretty mean pole dance, but I'm a little bit too heavy to lift this butt up. So <laughs> at the end of the day, it's just like, you know, God, keep providing um, the best way that you know how. And so um, if you feel like your dream is too big financially, just continue to trust God through the process. And mm-hmm. even if you don't know what the next steps are, keep doing what he told you to do. Um, until he tells you to do something different. And I don't want to be disrespectful because we have like a, a, a nationwide audience here. Um, I refer to God and Jesus as Lord over my life, but people refer to the universe, Allah, whatever your uh, religious preference is, no disrespect, but tap into your source. Absolutely. And begin to hear your source lead you and guide you in all things um, positive and all things well. Because um, I, I just say in and of ourselves, we wouldn't be able to do half the things that we do. And so um, definitely tap into whatever your source may be. Um, but for me, it's God. And so um, I don't want to be disrespectful to anyone and just... Um, say that whatever your source is, tap into it, believe it, and know that um, the end will work in your favor. I want to take the time to acknowledge a few more who came through. Official Phoenix Gibbs. Hey, sis, what's going on? Thank you for the support. Thank you for supporting Margaret on her interview. KB Bookshelf, welcome aboard. Thank you so much for the support. She's in Houston, Texas. She is an author. awesome author and she um does book reviews nice positive vibes thank you so much for coming through uh jazz divine i hope i'm saying it correctly thank you so much for coming through she's an awesome Mm -hmm. singer and makeup artist she got a new um ep out and so support Mm -hmm. her jazzy divine um she can sing amazing so um i'm definitely going to have her um be a part of some things that i have coming down the pike because she's an amazing singer i met her on set um of zeke and she was doing makeup that night but then i heard she Mm -hmm. can sing and then i listened to her songs and she's amazing so jazzy divine look her up on instagram she got a new um cd out and so support 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 and too much Maja. Thank you so much for coming through. That's my granddaughter. Hey, Hello. Maja. Granddaughter. <laughs> yes. We have <laughs> Maj. Who's oh, that's my grandson. Well. That's my oh, grandson. My I have, I have, I have, I have, I have like, I have like teen, I have like teenage grandchildren. And so, thank oh, you, Amaja and Samaj, for tuning in. Grandma, love you. Yeah, my first grandchild was a girl, and my second grandchild was a boy. And I said, God, finally remember me with the this boys. And now so we got like sweet. five or six boys. <laughs> oh, and we have Keisha Jens that came through. Hey, sis, thank you so much for coming through and supporting the Martine Show as well as Margaret PB. Oh, thank you. Oh, my goodness. This is nice. One question I want to ask you. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. If anyone were to become a playwright, Mm -hmm. how would they go on that journey? How does it, how do you get there? Writing is just writing. Um, Mm -hmm. The layout determines, in my mind, I could be wrong, but when I write a book, I, I, I write it from a story perspective. When I write a play, it's from a story perspective, but you have to break out the characters. So Martine says her part, Margaret says her part, Martine says her part, Margaret says her part. So the writing part gets kind of slowed down because you're trying to uh, create a scene and you're trying to have people um cohesively making a scene come together and then that scene has to transition into another scene and so it's like chapter one and chapter two Mm -hmm. and chapter three and they have to cohesively you know flow together you know um and so just the layout in my mind would probably be the difference but just write it and and go online and, and and give me a call i'll help you out but at the end of the day um writing is just writing and and um the, the scenes are a little bit shorter than chapters. And like I said, the cohesiveness of being able to flow through and it has to make sense and it has to make sense to you, the writer, but it has to definitely make sense to the reader. And so when they read it, you know, they're like, okay, this makes sense. And so I've written stuff and I 
am from New York, so now my accent is all country. And so I write the way that I talk. And so a lot of times they be like, Miss Margaret, T-A-K-I-N-G should be T-A-K-E-N. Okay, taken, taken. What, what? You know, like, you know what I mean, you know? And a lot of times they ad lib different things and they change it all together. And when you get on stage and you lose your line, just bring it back so the next person can remember, you know? But I mean, it's just about cohesiveness in your writing where scenes and chapters all flow and make sense. And so, um, you know, I can write something and it could just be like, <laughs> and, and then I have to go back and I have to clean it up or we'll do a table read. And so I'm always open to change um, things and ad lib things. And so um, usually with the characters, uh, when we get ready to do something, it's character development. So they have to go home and they have to say, OK, my role is John James. And who is John James? And I know in my mind who John James is, but you are the character. You're making this person come to life. So go home and do your homework and then come back and tell us who John James really is, you know. And um, so it's a lot of fun. We have a great time. I have created a stage family for myself. And so Avery is my son. Harmony is my sister. Josh is another son. And Darlita is like a daughter. And, and so... Um, they're amazing. They're, they're really amazing. Um, I've had people come from all walks of life um, to be a part of it. And, um, you know, I, at first, I never turned anybody away. So I had a 35 person cast that I had to get down and it got down to 20. And then I got a stage manager. She was like, look, you could really do this with like 10. So we cut a lot of people and uh, we got it down to like 10 because you can roll roles over into other roles. And it's just a character and you can just change your outfit, some hair, and you can use one person more than just once. And so um, it's been a learning process that I have been enjoying. And, um, you know, I've had some good people come along the way and teach me some things. And I would always say remain humble and remain teachable. Um, and if you want to grow, um, you know, just listen and, and submit yourself. Um, Kazar is my mentor and I went on set and he was like, OK, I need you to do this, that and the other. And to just sit there and gain a knowledge um, that he has to do a film. Um, it's amazing. So um my name is in the credits, and so I'm excited to see my name in the credits. Like, wow, I was a part of something bigger than me. And um, But just learning to listen and humble yourself um, and get what someone else is giving, gleaning from them, um, it's a, it'll help you out in the long run. Nice. I want to take mm -hmm. the time to acknowledge MK Kiwa, MK Iwa girl. Thank you so much for being on board. Welcome aboard. First time on the Martine Show. So oh, I want to acknowledge you. And Sam stated that the same thing. They say potato, potato. You know, that's when you're talking <laughs> about wording and everything. Yeah, we do get uh -huh. what you're saying and, and mm -hmm. all that. But thank you so much for sharing your passion with Aww. us. So you're definitely Aww. passionate about what you do. And I love your drive. Seriously. Aww. You know, Katie Bookshelf says, congratulations. So well deserved. Yes. Very, oh, very thank you. So. Thank you. Oh, she's laughing at my pole dance. Yes, girl, I will do a pole dance to get some money if I need to so everybody, I can pay for my production. Don't play with me. Everybody Don't play with me. I, look, I robbed Peter to pay Paul and I will do a pole dance. Yes, I will. I have taken rent money and car payments because we've had to travel to New York. I, I go out here and I have these big old grandiose ideas. We're going to New York and we're going to rent a theater and we got to stay in a decent hotel. And we've had some horrible, horrible dressing rooms. But you best believe Miss Margaret going to make sure that you lay down in a nice spot when you go to sleep. And I'm definitely going to give you some good food. And at the end of the day, I may not be able to pay you for this show, but just hang in there with me. And so this year we had two gigs and they hung in there with me and I was able to pay them. And it wasn't from a pole dance. OK, <laughs> it was from a budget. It was from a budget. And, and I would tell people in that aspect, stick 
in there with it because when people start to hire you to write for them you can set your price especially if you have done this before so i've mm -hmm. written before and i'm like okay this is my price this is what it's going to be because i have to pay my people so i'm going to submit my invoice so you get to that level it, things are levels things are levels understand that you may be at this level for a minute but just for a minute and then you become established in this i've been doing this since 2004 this is 2021 so i'm not new to the game um Ooh. i've learned a lot <laughs> i've you learned a really. lot <laughs> i've learned a lot to the game you know right. um and and being able to realize, you know what, I may not be where I want to be, but I am where I need to be at this time. And so I'm grateful for where I am and where I'm going. And so, you know, I tell people all the time, just stick in there with me, trust and believe doors are opening, blessings are overlapping, and things are happening all the time. And so keep hanging in there with me, but I'm grateful for everyone who tuned in on here this evening. I thank you for your yes. time. And um, I'm just grateful for the opportunity. Once again, like I said, it's Women's History Month and this is like legacy making right here. And today I was just like, <laughs> yeah, Let so I'm you. excited. It's such an honor to have you on board here. Oh, you know, to, to, to thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That you actually accepted the offer. Oh. And everything, your passion, your drive, your inspiration, you, your motivation is so remarkable. Come on, you just really just like messing my tissue all the way up here. <laughs> you know what? You're the type of person where like when you speak, we can feel it. You know, oh, wow. and everything that you have shared here today, like was heartfelt. I think everybody is on the same wavelength. Wow. Wow, every well, bless God, shared, bless every God, scenario, bless God. It's heartfelt. Well, you, you, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Every test has become a testimony. Every oh, mess yes. that I got myself into has definitely become a message. And I don't want to sound cliche, but it's definitely the truth. And, um, you know, I've had to keep hustling because I had three little babies and then I have four little babies and they all were watching me. And sometimes my zealousness, you know, um, for the things that I'm passionate about, um, will have me right to the edge. Like, okay, I've got to go to work. And now I'm at a point where I still work, um, a day job and all of this film and uh, movies and TV and all that stuff is just passion on the side, but I get excited about it. So, you know, um, the pandemic slowed me down for a purpose because my children are young adult women and my grandchildren are getting older. And so I was gone like every weekend. And so now we get together once a month and have like this big family time and regroup and what's going on with you. And, you know, we text every day. And so it, it slowed me down to the work-life balance. Like, okay, what's really, really important? Um, and family is definitely at the high priority of importance. Um, and so cherish each other and during this time where you don't know what tomorrow may bring we have vaccines and we've been tested negative and all of that stuff but god can do whatever he chooses to do and so i would just admonish you to embrace your family during this time and every day i love them and keep that work-life balance and you know we sit at the table and it's like hey what's going on with you do you need anything do you need anything because it's a lot of us and 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 time will get away from you and you know you have like i have four daughters and everybody is out mm -hmm. on their own and they have children their own immediate family and so mm -hmm. it's like okay come together the whole family and just kind of like what you got going on, what, what you got going on and just do a check-in, you know, mm -hmm. um, we, we become so text oriented. Um, everything is, you know, text, 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 pick up the mm -hmm. phone and call people. My grandmother says it's nice to hear your voice. And in this case, it's nice to hear your voice and see your face. And so I'm grateful for technology. Um, yeah. And <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 awesome time in my life, and I'm just happy, and and I'm good, and you know it's sincere, um, and yeah. just you know coming from being able to 
love and like from a healed place is amazing. We try to love from a hurt place and hurt people, hurt people, and we bleed on people and, you know, get healed. It's time to own up to your shit, you know, and pay attention to um, what's not jiving right with your inner self and look at you don't let anybody else look at you look at you first and own up to who you know you're not and become who you want to be don't worry about what anybody else wants you to be be who you want to be and who you know god created you to be we have this thing you know competition i'm gonna do what she doing i could do a bet no I just stay mm-hmm. over here in my own lane and I do my thing, you know, uh, yes. you know, I just create my own lane, do my own yes. thing. You know, uh, it was interesting. A couple of weeks ago, somebody was like, oh, why aren't you further along? I was like, well, where do you think I should be at at this point in time in my life? Because you're not my God. So where do you think I should be? Like, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not in competition. Right. I'm not in competition with anybody now exactly. I spot, and then, and right I'm looking at them like what are you doing <laughs> right oh those are the ones the ones who are not doing anything are definitely the ones worrying about why the you're here critics. at this level the hardest critics yeah. and you know you got to take the good with the bad and they help you develop and become a better person um and so I just listen to people you know um, some people are Ex- ecstatic and inspired beyond measure and then some people are just critical about everything so you mm-hmm. those people propel you to even go higher so you know have your opinions mm-hmm. and we can agree to disagree but um, I'm just at a point where peace is a priority so there are some people I've had to let go don't be afraid to let people go because they could be hindering your blessings and so um mm-hmm. You're in control. Control or delete. And if you have to block them in real life, block them on social media because I don't believe in that. See what I'm doing. You don't need to see what I'm doing. We done. That's it. It's over. The season is over. You know, we, 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 saw, we saw people pleasing all the time. Uh-huh. And I tell people all the time, um, validation is for parking. Ooh, yes. Validation is for parking. <laughs> Go get the car, get that validated stamp so we don't have to pay. Validation is for parking. <laughs> it's not for what we're trying to do right now. I'm sorry. Exactly. I, I, you know, we're not at elementary school. She don't like me. He don't like me. So what? Spell my name yeah. right. Capital M A R. Capital M. Don't forget <laughs> the capital M. <laughs> Spell my name right. You know, we just said that we. Oh. This, this is next. This is ne- this is next level. This is what the book is yeah. talking about. Go to the next level in all things. I'm serious because we can love a person, own it. We can yes. love a person, and they just a rotten seed. And and yes, and I used to walk yes. past. I used to walk past people. You know, the people on the corner. And you got your change and you give them change. And what are you sewing into? Because you see them there five years later and their kids this big now. Their kids were this small. We need help, you know. And I don't mind helping people, but it's five years later. You still got the same game. Your kids getting bigger. And I'm taking care of your family. When are you going to get up and take care of you now? So we have mm-hmm. to be careful where we sow seeds at because every ground is not good ground. And, yeah. you know, so just... Mm -mm. Yeah, you know, and we could be Mm someone into stuff or thinking we doing something for accolades and really Mm -hmm. we're not reaping a harvest. And when you sow a seed, it's about reaping a harvest. And so at the end of the day, where you sowing, it's really key, you know. And so when I write my books, I think about the people who are going to read the book. Um, What Mm -hmm. is it going to do to encourage or inspire their lives. Um, I ask people to buy the books and then share their reviews. And most of the time I'll give the books away. I went to, um, Oh girl, I'm on, I'm on the summer. I'm getting ready for the summer. So I went and got my pedicure because we had have cute feet ladies. Don't be coming out here with no horrible feet for the summer. We've been in the house too long for these horrible feet. And so, <laughs> yeah, I could be a girl. I could be a comedian. My children tell me, but keep my day job because it pays better and I have insurance benefits. <laughs> Being a comedian don't pay so well, but girl, let me tell you something. My, my daughter was telling me about this lady and she is snatched by Farrell, honey. 
yes, it is time to get them Brazilians and them Yannis done. Get it done, girls. Get it done. <laughs> yes. Self care, self love. Yes. We we have all of this. We have we have all of this cute from the the waist up. It's time to get cute from the waist <laughs> down. You know. Yes. Yes. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that. Yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> Well, once again, thank you so much, everybody, for being on board, for supporting Margaret P. Bean on her oh, interview. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for supporting The Martine Show. Margaret, it's been such a phenomenal evening tonight. Oh, thank you for having me. Oh. You know, you touched me in so many different ways. I'm so happy we wow. had this time. Wow. You know, this interview for me is one of the le legendary ones, for sure. Oh no, my I, gosh. Well, thank it. you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that so much. Thank you for having me. And, um, you know, just anytime you have my number, we can just have girl chat offline. Um, and so I'm grateful for the Martine show and much success in the future books, the show, everything. I'm excited about what you're doing and it's amazing um, to give other women platforms to be heard and tell their stories and to share love um, with everyone. You know, I'm excited. So thank you so much for having me um, and it's just a blessing. And like I said, Women's History Month to be a part of something bigger than yourself that you could not even imagine that you would have um, in your journey. It's an awesome privilege. So thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome. It's definitely my pleasure. So everyone, please be sure to come back. Uh, next Tuesday, we'll be having our last interview for Women's Month series. And those of you who've been on board, you've seen how it has come through. So we're going to have our last one on Tuesday, which I'm looking forward to. And then awesome. in April, we'll start a new series, but I'm not going to tell you what that's going to be. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. All okay. right. Wait well, and see. You all take care. Next Tuesday, 8 p.m. ESP, right here again, author Martine Myers handled. Bye. Have a good night. Bye-bye. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.